Hi, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, my name is Stephanie Deem, and I'm an assistant professor in the engineering physics department, and my research is in the College of Engineering at the University of Wisconsin. So I'm really excited to be here today to tell you about the um, research we're doing in my lab. We're working on harnessing the power of the sun for here on Earth for clean energy with our research group, Pegasus 3. And so as a background of kind of motivation and why we got into this research, for more than a century, most of our energy is generated by burning fossil fuels. And this is a fire is a chemical uh, self-sustaining reaction uh, at 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. So 80% of our energy is from burning gas, coal, natural oil, and that results in releasing a lot of um, greenhouse gases, which are is harmful for our environment. Uh, so what we're working on here is a clean alternative energy source. And this is, uh, we're looking towards our sun for motivation here. Um, so the way that our sun um, creates its own energy is through fusion. This is the fundamental energy source that helped create the universe that we live in. And so what's really happening inside the sun, what makes the sun burn is fusion. And so what happens when you heat up a gas really, really hot, you can strip the electrons from the nuclei. So you get this charge of electrical gas, electrically charged gas and you heat it up to, um, in the sun, 20 million degrees, the particles get so hot, they fuse together. And in that fusion process, they release a lot of energy. Uh, so we're looking at harnessing that for use here on Earth. And so why do you want to do that? Um, it's really due to the high fuel efficiency of fusion that makes it an attractive energy source. So for fusion here on Earth, we use two light isotopes of hydrogen, uh, one deuterium and uh, the other is tritium. You can find the fuel for fusion, uh, enough de deuterium from one bath water, um, plus tritium um, that you can get from lithium uh, in two laptop batteries. You can use this fuel and it will provide you enough energy for your entire lifetime. This is powering everything in your house, your car, all your mobile devices. Everything comes from just a small amount of fuel. The other bonus is uh, there's no greenhouse gas emissions, no pollution. The only output is helium in this case. And if you want to compare that to the way we generate 80% of our electricity right now, um, typically through burning coal, the same amount of energy density um, for your lifetime is provided by 230 tons of coal. That's burning a lot and a lot of coal for your lifetime. And that results in the same energy from fusion uh, plus 380 tons of pollution. And so that's really why I got into this research was to make a, a difference and, and, a, and provide energy sources that can help combat climate change. And I, just for a little bit of information, if you wanted to um, create a forest, uh, grow a forest to actually handle that pollution, it would take 50,000 trees to absorb that much pollution. So that's really why we're focusing on the promise of fusion energy research in our lab. And so I mentioned when you heat up the gas really, really hot, it, you strip the electrons from the nuclei, you get this ultra um, charged gas, uh, and we call this a plasma. And so because the plasmas here on Earth for fusion are uh, actually over 100 million degrees, we have to cleverly contain them. So the way that we do that is we make magnetic bottles. So we found that when you apply a magnetic field to these electrically charged plasmas, these gases, you can actually get these charged particles to follow the magnetic field line. Um, that's great. So we first started with straight magnetic field lines, but you can lose particles um, at, from the ends. So what we do is we twist those magnetic field lines into um, something that we call a tokamak, which is basically a donut-shaped magnetic bottle. So that's what we're studying here at the University of Wisconsin in the uh, engineering physics department is these, uh, magnetic, these magnetic bottles. And so that's um, our, what our research group does. We're Pegasus 3, and we study the compact geometry. So we're really looking at, because we're in the College of Engineering, how do you tackle these engineering challenges uh, that can really be game changers for something like fusion energy. So we, we study these compact magnetic bottles. We also focus on innovations to make fusion energy a reality. So this is 
what can we do to optimize this process when you're looking at commercialization? So we study, as I mentioned, compact geometry, and we also study uh, unique ways to optimize these magnetic bottles, and um, in specific, looking for um, ways to start up these reactors. So there's an extensive research program that's been going on in our group, and we're really excited about the next generation of our project. And we really enjoyed training these um, next generation of engineers um, with fusion energy research. So uh, one of the things that we tackle besides those compact ma magnetic geometries is uh, startup in these uh, tokamak devices. So tokamaks rely on magnetic induction to start. And so I've shown an example here of a transformer. Um, so if you drive um, current in the primary winding, this actually creates a magnetic flux that then induces current in this secondary winding. Um, so we use that in generators and uh, we actually can use this to start up tokamaks. That's pretty much how every tokamak starts up. We drive current in this central magnet that we call an ohmic solenoid or just a solenoid magnet. And then that in turn drives current in the plasma and starts it up and starts heating it up too. Um, it works really, really well. However, the downfall is that it takes up space and you can only use this to start up your device. So if you really wanna to look towards uh, uh, commercializing fusion, fusion energy, you wanna optimize this process as much as possible in a reactor to ultimately improve efficiency and cost. And so the challenge that we face is due to our compact geometry, which makes these more efficient magnetic bottles, it leads to higher stresses and limited space for magnetic induction coil. So I'm really excited for this next journey that we're going on right now. We're actually rebuilding a whole new facility and we're really lighting a match for fusion energy. So as I mentioned, um, future tokamaks call for that no central magnetic induction coil. And this is really to minimize um, you know, space, the solenoid due to shielding and extra costs as this brings to reactors. Uh, by removing the solenoid, it actually simplifies the tokamak design. So this is a potential fusion reactor cost reduction that can be big for our field. Um, it also provides more, more space for shielding in the environment and also a blanket material that actually extracts the reactor, or uh, the heat from the reactor. And then it has results in lower electrical mechanical stresses for the devices. And here's our research team. Um, we're all working really, really hard right now on these upgrade activities. And um, a lot of what we do is educate students too. So they're really a big part of the research that we do. And so here's what the facility will look like. It's the um, major upgrade is underway. And what we're doing is we're actually removing that central induction coil. This is actually big for fusion. It really doesn't happen. And I'm excited because this allows us to really jump in and uh, harness those innovations that we've uh, worked on in our research group in the past. So one example of how you can start up a reactor without that central induction coil is we've developed unique techniques to inject plasma current. And so you can see that here, there's actually these injectors that are those bright lights and they've actually started up the plasma here without that induction coil. We're, so we'll have that technique and we're also at, adding a microwave um, heating system too that will work on startup and also um, maintaining those those high temperature fusion plasmas. These are actually uh, in fusion reactors. They're going to be 10 times hotter than the sun. And so thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I really appreciate your time and I really love to share the research that we do here in the College of Engineering and in the Department of Engineering Physics on helping to realize fusion energy for um, our future and also to aid in combating climate change on a on, on a near-term time scale. Thank you.